Hey guys, Dean here. If you're wondering how do I play Minecraft Java Edition on mobile, this is exactly how. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing how you can install Minecraft Java Edition and run it on mobile phone. And no, I'm not talking about MCPE, aka the Pocket Edition. I'm talking about the real Java Edition that we use to showcase the top 10 mods on this channel and the version where you can actually use Java mods, i.e. Forge Mod Loader, Fabric Mod Loader, and Resource Packs, aka Texture Packs, on PC. So, Let's start that up. So on my screen right here, you can see I have a mobile stream into the PC and I'm actually emulating a mobile. So this is a mobile simulation. I'm using the software Blue Stacks to do this, but this is exactly the same as if I was on a mobile right now, recording it directly to the screen. This is the example on an Android. I'm not 100% sure if this works the same on an iPhone. So if that's what you're trying to get Java Edition on, you may need to double check if the Apple Store actually has this app. I'm not 100% sure. Please drop that in the comments below if anyone's actually running it on an Apple phone, but for the purpose of this tutorial we're going to be showcasing this on an android all we need to do is go to play store and on the google play store we're going to look for one specific key app and this key app is none other than pojav launcher so pojav launcher is basically a launcher which will allow us to emulate minecraft on a mobile phone and we're not emulating mcpe this is the full normal java edition so we use this tool to run minecraft so all you need to do is go ahead and press download and install and it's going to download it to your phone and it downloads very quickly the launch is only like 75 mb so it's a really quick download so we can jump in and get started rather quickly so we're just going to go back we're going to exit the play store and then we should have it now on our phone's home screen ignore all these other apps these are just on here by default we're going to double click and we're going to press allow here so it accesses our media and photos this is just mainly if you want to install things onto the app like different mods which i'm not going to be covering in this specific video also most people have likely migrated their account or ready to the Mojang platform, which is linked to Microsoft now, and then it will load up the launcher. And you can see the Pojav launcher is basically just the Minecraft vanilla launcher. It looks near enough exactly the same. It's kind of like a one-to-one. -one. You can see the whole UI and the interface it looks pretty much the same as what we used to on computer, right? For the Java edition loader which is the Microsoft loader. So when we get on the app, we have our username in the top left and we have Pojav launch here and we have some information. So the about page for start shows us all about the software and what it does, right? So Pojav launcher is a free open source and stable Microsoft launcher for Android. So this obviously means that it's most likely exclusive to Android phones, which is based off of Boardwalk, which is a project to create an MC launcher. Okay, so this just shows all the credits, but then there's the change log. So you can see it now has a fully functional mod installer. So if you want to use mods, then we can do that. If you leave a comment in the comments down below, let me know if you want me to do a tutorial on how to install forge mods or fabric mods and those mod loaders, because maybe that could be a useful video. If you guys want to use mods, do let me know if you want that video and smash a like on this video to let me know you liked it. So it can also run Minecraft 1.13 and above, which is good, because that means we can obviously play the newer versions, i.e. 1.18.1, which you guys probably most likely want to play, and it's faster with Java 8. Now, I'm not sure if it runs Java 6, 16. I would presume it does because I thought 1.18.1 requires Java 16. Not 100% sure on that though. I will have to fact check it. But as you can see, Java 17 for running Minecraft versions above this number. Okay, so it does run Java 17 for the newer versions. We have a revision to all the controls. So there's new features, new drawer buttons, and control editing features, which I'll show you momentarily in a little while. And a few other updates. Okay, for an example, we can scroll down. It says added Optifine installer. So this is really cool. So we're just going to go into news. You can see we have news about the updates we have the patreon if you want to donate to the developers because this is a pretty cool app okay there's not really any other apps that offer this as far as i'm aware of or at least as good as this and we have the credits right we also have development console I wouldn't touch this. We have the crash log, which tells you why the app actually crashed, which is super important. But what we're looking at here is settings. So let's go down to settings. So we have a few different subheadings, video and renderer, control customization, Java tweaks, miscellaneous settings, and experimental stuff. The first one is mainly just for the rendering and video hardware settings. So resolution, scaling type, and the renderer we use. So the renderer, obviously you can see, supports different versions. So the Holy GL4 ES one supports 1.0 to 1.19 plus. And then we have an open gel renderer. I would just leave this on default to this because it seems to be pretty good. But if you do have game crashes, perhaps experiment with changing this, which might actually fix your game from crashing if you have problems with it loading. Then we have the resolution slider. So 100% is a full res and you can turn it down if you want it to be a smaller resolution. And that's pretty much that. 
Under control customization, this is useful because we can change the delay and duration of the trigger pressing. We can disable different gestures, for example, little hints and stuff when we hover over blocks. We can change the scale of the controls on screen. So that's all of those phone controls like the arrows, the joysticks. We can turn down the scale of those. We can set a custom offset for each side of the screen for where the control elements are displayed. We can change the scaling of the virtual mouse, which is the size and the speed of how it moves and a few other settings, which are super useful. Okay just for basically performance of the game and how it feels when we play with it. Under Java tweaks, this is pretty cool. So we can manage the installed different Java versions. Over here, we have internalized Java 8. So we have Java 8 running here. We can also add a new one. And you can see we can open from our phone over here. But I'm just going to leave this on default. We can change the arguments just like we can in the Java launcher. So how much RAM are we going to use, for an example? Although that is also already down here as an option. So memory allocation is how much RAM you're basically giving to Minecraft from your phone to run it. Now, this is pretty important. Since I'm using a virtual machine, basically a virtual phone right now, it only has up to 1250 MB, which is like 1.2 gigabytes of RAM able to be assigned to it. But this is really based on your phone's hardware and what phone you have when you're actually doing this on your actual phone. So that's pretty important too, if you want it to run better, but hopefully it won't blow up your phone if you have an old phone. Miscellaneous settings, we have a few things down here. For an example, Cosmetica Capes. This is a really cool feature. For anyone who doesn't know, I did a top 10 a while ago of the best mods, I think for 1.18.1 or 18.2 and I featured Cosmetica and the developers obviously liked the showcase and they featured a clip of my video on the page but basically Cosmetica is a capes mod so you have capes you have different hats it's basically a cosmetics mod where you can wear different wearables and it's a really good mod which I have obviously got behind before and I really do enjoy it so that's a cool feature that we can actually turn on in Pojav launcher which is something which is quite notable we can also change down here the version type which will be in our version list on the launcher so do you want to just display releases so 1.0, 1 1.1. 1 .1. Do you want to display the snapshots? Basically those experimental versions of the game that have weird numbers and characters in the names. The old alpha and beta from the old versions of Minecraft. If you want to test those out, you can do that here too. So that's all the settings. Pretty cool, pretty beefy settings that we can change. And if we want to actually run the game, we can also set our profiles here. And since I mentioned that I would showcase it, I'm going to showcase how you can change all the controls. So under custom controls, we would click that. And over here, we have a controls pad, right? So basically, I can take my camera down a little bit and you can see we can click on all these elements and remove them. We can clone them. As you can see, we can move them around the screen. So where they will be displayed in game. And you can see we have all these different sliders. We can click edit on it and it will showcase all of the options which we can change. So basically, this just shows where everything is drawn on the screen when we run the game and we can move them around for our own convenience. But I'm actually going to exit because I don't want to mess up with the UI, but that's exactly how you do it if you want to change where everything is displayed. We can also click on install jar. So over here, we can click on our downloads folder if we're on phone, see all of our files and install them. This is how you would install Forge or Fabric, okay? You would download the jar of the loader and then you would install it this way, okay? Which we'll do in a different video. So then all that's left to actually play the game is our profiles okay so we have custom profiles down here we have 1.18.2 by default and we have 1.7.10 and we can't edit these i don't believe but if we click create new profile we can just type in pojav profile just for our tutorial for an example and then what we can do is we can leave this default folder i wouldn't recommend changing any of this unless you know what you're doing the runtime is for java 16 or java 8 the default is java 8 i don't think this virtual phone we're running actually has Java 16. So I don't think we can actually test the newer versions, but we can change the renderer. I'd recommend just leaving this. Unless the game crashes, then you can change it to this one and see if that works better. But if it's on a newer version, then I think 1.16 maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, then you will need Java 16. So that might also be a reason it crashes because as you can see, I only have Java 8 over here. For safety reasons, I'm just going to go ahead and do a 1.12.2 build because that definitely runs with Java 8 and it should work with our renderer and now we have a pojav profile tutorial which is our new profile we've just created if we want to run the game so that's basically how we do it so if this video was valuable press the like button and make sure to subscribe for minecraft mod videos also if you have any questions or if you're having any troubles with this tutorial something didn't work for you or if you're getting crashes or errors comment that down below and i'll try and get back to you as soon as possible and other people might be able to help you too make sure to subscribe and i'll see you next time